Marquette University and the Al McGuire Center is the site of game number three of the Big East pod of the Northeast region in the basketball tournament, the $2 million winner take all all comers team. We feature the number three seed, the Golden Eagles in the Northeast and the number 11 seed, Paul Inn. Glad to have you with us this afternoon, along with my partner, Tony Smith. I'm Patrick Reed. Tony, we've got all we can ask for after this pod. We got a lower seeded team in Hall Inn winning yesterday, beating six seeded Jack Attack. And we've got the home team, the Golden Eagles alumni, playing in front of a good house here inside the Al McGuire Center. Yeah, Patrick, it's been an absolute treat so far. And we've seen a lot of different things here. We've seen young guys who've just come out of college. We've seen uh, guys who've been gone away you haven't seen them around so it's a treat for the fans and I know people aren't watching to see these guys and where they've been and now come back we've had a guy come out of retirement Pat, and, and just to, be to come back just to be here something about that alumni feel as well guys want to be a part of that again they want to relive those college days and have some success too as we take a look at our northeast bracket in the TBT the winner will move on from this Big East pod for play on July the 28th. So a little bit of a break. The rest of the tournament will get underway in the coming weeks, including two weeks away for our Northeast Regional. And Tony, if there's one thing that this matchup's gonna come down today, potentially it's going to be the three-point shooting. And for the Hall inside, Jeremy Hazell can light it up, even though it got a little bit cold as the game went on yesterday. Yeah, you're right. He was absolutely instrumental in the start for Hall in. He had 14 in that first quarter. Now. I don't know if it was legs or he got tired because he did play big minutes, but he kind of ran out of gas late in that game. But, you know, it was Quentin DeCozzi who had to pick up the slack at the end of the game to close that out. But Hazel's going to try to bounce back today and be a little more consistent throughout the game, but he was absolutely phenomenal in that opening quarter. And if this is going to be a three-point shooting game, he is a guy who can light it up in a hurry. As for the Golden Eagles alumni, Jameel Wilson put on a show after the second quarter yesterday. Yeah, he did. And it is going to be a three-point shooting contest out here today. Marquette at 44 there's 69 shots from three-point land. You see Jamil Wilson was 9 of 16. After a slow start, he absolutely caught fire and, and lit it up for the Golden Eagles. And they had another nice contribution from Maurice Acker, the little guard who kind of had to close the game out a little bit there. But the big game winner was who? Jamil, Jamil Wilson. Wilson. There you go. Of course, he finished the game. How fitting. Game three of the Big East spot of the Northeast Regional of the basketball tournaments. Hall in, so far the only lower seeded team to win in this edition of TBT. One of two pods taking place this weekend. The other wrapped up in Spokane last night as Gale Force, the St. Mary's team, really put the screws to few good men, the Gonzaga alumni team. Yeah, and Blackledge in the game. Let's see if Hall in stays into that zone and what kind of shot Marquette can come up with against that zone. So four now for Jeff Robinson, two for two at the line. Three quarters of Golden Eagles alumni field goal attempts having three pointers. Starting the game two for eight. Just according to script, right? Yeah, that's a tough shot there by Wilson. Marquette's got to get a little more movement when they get it to that high post in the middle. So whistle in the backcourt. <laughs> So look at Joel White. Looks like he hurt his right hand. Off the Wilson shot, right. Swiped across on the rebound by Willie yeah, Atwood. Maybe, maybe caught a finger. Looks like. It looks to be all right. Needed a little break. A couple of seasons at Texas State for Wright. Led the whack in scoring in 2012-13. 17.8 points per game. Marquette with a, with a little trap. The corner where Jamel Jackson fires and hits falling away. And that is no shock. You know what that guy can do from the three-point line. Dieter squares and it one. You know, Marquette still can't figure out a way to get inside that zone, which they're going to have to try to do later. But in the meantime, Diener knocks down a three and gets a foul. Big time shot there. That is vintage. My granddaddy Diener. 
36-year-old Travis Dean are hitting the deck and knocking down the three-pointer. Played this past season in Serie A. So Hall yeah. in. Marquette trying to put some pressure on and really get a steal. 14 and gives it away. It comes oh, wow. Blackman with the hammer. Oh, my. Flight. <laughs> Timeout, Hall in. Marquette gets the crowd into it. Wow, watch this hammer. Go right one and no part of that. <laughs> We're talking vintage Diener. That's vintage Trent Blackledge. <laughs> well, the Golden Eagles alumni storming right back into this game. It's 18-16. Yeah, again, if they're going to struggle trying to figure out that half-court zone, they got to figure out a way to manufacture some points. No better way than to put pressure on Hall in, who has a limited size roster, and their starters play big minutes as they did yesterday. Legs are going to come into a play at some point. Marquette putting that full court press on, make those guys work. They got a steal and a turnover, which turned into a fast break bucket. So I don't expect this press to stop anytime soon. They've got the legs, so why not? Yeah. Hall in utilizes just a couple of substitutions. And it's not a matter of getting a steal every time either. It's just making guys work. Jackson was trying for his second make from three. Yeah, and then here they push the pace on the other end. So keeping the hall busy on both ends of the floor. Dieter didn't see anything he liked. Yeah, well, he, he, he should have shot it, and he knew it. Now it's Acker. Yeah, those long three-pointers are tough rebounds. And Marquette is able to get a, a second look here. Hall in had a big rebounding advantage at the last break. Golden Eagles alumni will try to keep that close. Skip the cross. Blackledge for three. Great find by Diener. Now, Diener and Acker are really controlling this ballgame in that sense. They're making some great decisions, some great attacks. Lazell across. Aaron Brown, and now Joel Wright runs into Derek Wilson. And here's where Marquette has to be careful. They're doing a lot of switching, and they're winding up with some tough matchups down low. Derek Wilson there out man by Joel Wright in the post. And definitely made it tough for Wright there, but he has six points. Shot clock to 10. Wilson is going to pass it up. Diener's got to take that one. Diener sees a lane. Slapped away by Robinson. Might have thought that was goaltending, but that's legal. In this game it is. Great recognition by Hall in to knock that off. Once the ball touches the rim in TBT, it is fair game. Jeremy Hazell, five early points for Hall in after a 14 points first quarter yesterday. Well, you got to get to him. Got to get to that guy. Marquette got lucky there. Brown back up. And he's fouled. They, again, they give up another Ooh. offensive rebound. Second foul against Derek Wilson. Send Aaron Brown to the foul line. Brown spent his college playing days at Temple, Southern Miss, and was a grad transfer to Boston College. For Jamar Wise's team, Wise was happy with Jeremy Huzel's first quarter yesterday. It got everybody else going. And what turned out to be a well-spread, well-executed offensive game against Jack Attack. At the buzzer, that's off. Hall in, heads to the end of the first quarter with a 22-19 lead, but Lawrence Blackledge bringing them to their feet inside the Al McGuire Center. Golden Eagles alumni, the three seed, putting on a show inside the Al McGuire Center, up by 12, 52 to 40 in the three versus 11 matchup, the final game of the Big East Five. Glad to have you with us in Milwaukee. Patrick Reed, Tony Smith, along with Mark Kent, head coach Steve Wojciechowski. Coach, we were talking about you during the second half. We said <laughs> there's probably no bigger fan of the Golden Eagles alumni than 
Steve Wojciechowski, but I know that's been one of your stated goals with this program to engage alumni. You say the jersey is so important and those who wore it. No, no, there's no question. And it's uh, there's a little less stress being a fan, that's for sure, than being <laughs> on the other side where, where Joe Chapman is. But, uh, you know, to see all these guys who represented Marquette and the Marquette men's basketball program so well have a chance to come together again and represent the jersey again, it, it's fun. And I've become friends with a number of the guys and to see them out there playing so well in a Marquette jersey has been uh, a real treat for me. Here we go, your target number 96. Golden Eagles alumni are sitting on 89. That's where they have to get to if they want to advance to the Super 16 for the third straight year. Patrick Reed, Tony Smith, our crew with you back in Milwaukee to finish off the Big East pod. There you go, Golden Eagles just have to do more of the same. They've been working themselves into some great looks and been knocking down some shots with ease. Now Colin and Wilson here. Yeah, that's something I love to see more from Jamil Wilson going into his normal career. Yeah. Working off of that jump shot that we know he's capable of hitting, but getting to the rim a little bit. We saw a lot of that in his time at Marquette. Trying to bring the three-point shot into his arsenal. Well, he's got to let this guy finish the game off, right? Oh, yeah. It's been his game so far. Step back for Acker. There it is. 22 points for Maurice Zacker. Yeah, he's got to be the he's got to be the guy to hit 90, 96 for him. They can do it on the next possession. Actually, a three three by Acker would be fitting, right? Can we get the storybook into here, back? Can we get it? I know everybody in the crowd is looking for Acker to end this. They got Wilson on his big day to end it on a three in the last game. Robinson. Wilson got a little bit lazy there. He's had a nice day with 17 points. They want Acker to call his own number here. Why not? He'll let it fly. Do it again. Do it again. There it is. 25 points for Maurice Acker. Another fitting finish for Golden Eagles alumni, and they are on to the Super 16. How beautiful was that? I mean, that's how you draw it up in the huddle, right? <laughs> that is what they wanted. That's what the fans wanted here inside the Al McGuire Center. Cheering on their Golden Eagles alumni. And today with a 96-76 win over Hall Lynn, the third seed is through in the Northeast region. Hall Lynn put up a, a great fight, though, for a long time. I think, again, as the cliche says, they ran out of gas a little bit there with limited number of players. Their starters playing big minutes yesterday, also having to tow big minutes today. Their shooters, their scorers, Quentin DeCozzi, Hazel, they could not get it done today, officially on the offensive end. There's the man of the hour. Maurice Sacker is preparing for today, sending Golden Eagles alumni to the Super 16. Let's take a look at that Northeast region bracket. As we are through the Big East pod, the Golden Eagles are through again. They'll be looking at that second seed, HBC Sicklerville, a very interesting team. And this year's version of the TBT could be a dark horse type team. Golden Eagles alumni are trying to get past the quarterfinals for the first time. And they'll have another opportunity coming up in a few weeks. Only thing I'm confused about is the purple uniforms. They Not changed quite the, blue. They changed the Golden Eagles colors. <laughs> Whatever the color, <laughs> they're finding a way to get it done. That's right. Golden Eagles alumni with a win in front of the home crowd here in Milwaukee. A 20-point victory will send them through to the Super 16. For everyone on our crew and for Tony Smith, I'm Patrick Reed saying so long. Glad to have you with us this past weekend for the Big East Pod. Enjoy the rest of TBT on the ESPN family of networks.